great opportunity for me to, uh, to be here with you and share a few things about uh, what we do in Romania and uh, about the, the way in which we engage with pro-life issues in a country we, uh, which has the highest abortion rate in the European Union and the fourth abortion rate in the world. Um, because after all, abortion is a challenge to Christian compassion. Um, after that, we are going to go through a case study, if we have time for that. It's not related to abortion, but it's related to uh, the way in which we see the unborn. So, first of all, let's have a look at the abortion history during communism in Romania. Uh, in 1957, the procedure was officially legalized in our country, uh, following which 80% of pregnancies would end in abortion. So Romania had one of the most liberal abortion policies in Europe since abortions were legal in the first trimester and provided at no cost by the um, healthcare system, the governmental healthcare system. In an effort to ensure normal democratic growth, Decree 770 was authorized by Nicolae Ceausescu's government. Uh, so abortion became illegal uh, and motherhood was described as the meaning of women's lives uh, and contraception disappeared from the shelves. Medical practitioners were also expected to follow stringent policies and were held partially responsible for the national birth rate. If they were caught breaking any aspect of the abortion law, they were to be incarcerated. When a physician did not want to help or could not be bribed to perform an abortion, However, uh, women went to less experienced abortionists or used old remedies, the so-called backstreet abortions. Um, well, this policy was reversed in 1990 after the fall of the communism, after the fall of after the Romanian Revolution, and since that time, abortion has been legal on request um, in Romania um, for the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. Um, abortions um, for during later stages of pregnancy are legal only for medical reasons. Well, the reversal in trend was immediate with a decline in the fertility rate and a sharp increase of the number of abortions. For instance, in 1990 alone, uh, we had one million abortions in a country with 22 million, with a 22 million population. Uh, so that meant that instead, that meant that uh, we had three abortions for one birth. But fortunately, the trend decreased, and in 2010, we had one abortion for two births. Anyway, it's still a huge issue. All in all, between 1958 and 2008, Romania had almost 22 million <coughs> abortions. Um, which is a higher number than the actual population of Romania. Um, the freedom to have an abortion has often been associated with uh, the fall of the communism, with democracy and capitalism. Um, We're going to see a few of the challenge challenges that we have to face in the pro-life work in Romania. But first, um, we'll, um, look, we'll have to see a video about the culture, uh, about the medical context and the social context of what we do. It's also a video about our work, about one of our projects, but I would like you to concentrate more on, um, on, the, con on the, the whole context of, of, and of, on the background. So, um, just as I, was, as I was saying earlier, we do have um, this culture of abortion in Romania. And um, for a great, as you have just seen, for a great number of doctors, the question is not how can I save this life, but should I save this life, or is this life worthy of saving? Uh, besides, a lot of the women have very little information uh, about the way in which abortion could affect them and about fetal development. Um, and an unwanted pregnancy is uh, always a complex personal, uh, relational, moral, spiritual problem. Um, and unfortunately, abortion is seen as a quick technical fix, which is supposed to solve it, but it doesn't. Um, maybe you have heard of uh, four months, three weeks, and two days. Um, it's a 2007 Romanian film. Um, which is very interesting. I would recommend. I would recommend it. 
It won, it won the Palme d'Or at the 2007 Cannes Film Festival. And the film is set in the communist Romania in the final years of Nicolae Ceausescu's uh, regime. And it tells the story of two students, roommates in the university dormitory, dormitory who arrange an illegal abortion. So the film follows the story of Otilia and Gabriela, uh, two university friends in an unnamed Romanian town. At the end of the movie, Gabriela has an abortion and Otilia wraps the baby and drops it in a trash outside the building. Um, Otilia then goes back to the hotel and finds Gabriela sitting at the restaurant. She sits and tells Gabriela that, that they are never going to talk about this episode ever again. Um, this is actually usually the attitude that the Romanian society has um, towards abortion, the so-called silent conspiracy. Abortion actually is a subject that is extremely rarely debated in the public square. Um, and there is, there is a profound sadness at the sense of silent despair and grief carried by so many women in our society. It is as though abortion is a deep scar penetrating through our society. The statistics demonstrate just how many people in our community um, are touched by it, although for most of them the pain is never revealed, not even to their closest friends and confidants. Um, we could say that this uh, attitude of silent conspiracy is also available for the church in Romania. I'm not sure if um, my Romanian colleagues agree with that. Um, it would be interesting to know. But um, I think that abortion is a very sensitive issue and often because of their personal history, Christians keep it quiet. Um, people in the church, of course, do not feel comfortable with uh, revealing a history that doesn't honor them. This is why a lot of them would never do anything um, in order to uh, promote a pro-life message because it might bring painful memories. Um, a lot of the people, as I said before, have been affected by abortion in one way or the other, uh, which is why, which why um, is, it is very difficult to bring the subject into the spotlight. Actually, I could say that there has been a vast silence on this issue in our churches. Christians are quick to say that they are pro-life and that they believe in the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death, but most do little practically to incarnate that belief um, and help change our culture from a culture of death to a culture of life. Um, so who takes responsibility for all of this? Um, during the last quarter of the 20th century, Christian thinker Francis Schaeffer and um, pediatric surgeon C. Everett Coop embarked on a project to equip the church on the crucial issue of abortion and warn of the looming threats against human life and human dignity. This is what Schaeffer said in one of his talks. We have forgotten our heritage. A lot of the evangelical complex like to talk about the old revivals and they tell us we ought to have another revival. We need another revival. You and I need a revival. We need another revival in our hearts. Wherever you have found a great revival, it's always had three parts. First, it has called for the individual to accept Christ as savior. Then it has called upon the Christians to bow their hearts to God and really let the Holy Spirit have his place in fullness in their life. But there has always been, in every revival, a third element. It has always brought social change. So what if we had Christian leaders who will break the silence on this issue? What if we had Christian lawyers challenging a change? How about Christian doctors speaking against the rise of an abortion culture? How about Christian businessmen to put their lives uh, at work on the line concerning these things which they would say as Christians are central to them. How about Christian educators? Um, abortion itself would uh, be worth spending much of our lifetimes to fight against, but uh, this is only the symptom of the total. What we are actually facing is humanism. Man, the measure of all things, uh, viewing human life as having no intrinsic value. 
Um, many Christians understand that it is wrong to kill the unborn. Many others are unsure about the moral status of, an, of a human embryo in frozen storage, whether it is worthy of the same respect as a baby or not. Uh, images of aborted babies may raise awareness on the issue because of the natural repulsion that they evoke. But unfortunately, not all bioethical issues can rely on the power of such images. Um, and maybe abortion may have been the first all of the bioethics issues. Um, later on, in, if we have the time to discuss the case study, we will see another bioethical issue. Uh, I'm sure that you know better than I do that in common jurisprudence, when you have a duty to prevent the commission of a crime, but fail to make the effort, you are complicit in its commission. You are what's known as an accomplice. Uh, Christ's brother, James, put it in this way. The one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. And we know the right thing to do about the issue of abortion. Thank you.